Welcome everyone, thanks for tuning back into the next episode in our e-bike light roundup. Today we're gonna to be reviewing a, probably one of the most exotic and definitely the most expensive bike in our group test and that is the Scott Lumen. So let's talk about how well this $16,000 bike rides and what stood out and what we would change. So the Scott Lumen is available in models that don't quite cost $15,999. Uh, they start at around $7,000, go up from there. This is a top of the line model, um, XTR brakes, axis drivetrain, exquisite one piece carbon fiber wheels that are just, I mean, they're beautiful to look at, right? I mean, they are attention grabbing items and it does contribute to the bike only weighing 34.7 pounds. Um, it has the TQ HPR50 drive unit, uh, with 50 newton meters of torque and a 360 watt hour battery with the optional 160 watt hour range extender, which you see mounted right now. Uh, it is a 130 mil front and rear travel XC focused, you know, trail bike, um, and it has the geo and the stem and bar to back that up. So. Uh, the size large that we've got has a 476 reach, 625 stack, 347.6 mil bottom bracket, 450 chain stays, uh, an overall wheelbase of 1,240 mil, has a 77.2 degree seat tube angle and a 65.5 degree head tube angle. Um, so, standouts, first thoughts when you saw this bike, Chris, what do you think? I wanna jump on it, looks okay. cool. Yeah. It's exotic. Yes. I was like, what's this? You know, yeah. That's it's. You got to try it. It it does well. It's it's a rocket ship. Like yeah. once you point it, it goes. But you are in more of that cross country position where you take it in the rougher stuff. Your hands, arms, everything just hurts. Right. Um. But it's a blast. It's super super fast. Um. The flowy rolly trails are are where this thing wants to live. Yeah. Um. When you point it uphill on some steep stuff, you're you're definitely you're you're moving it. But again, this thing is lighter. Yeah. Than my trail bike. Yeah. <laughs> and it's got a battery. Like, crazy, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it definitely shines in trail scenarios, yeah. you know, meandering tracks, little ups, little downs, especially like with the twin lock, which, you know, we're not really huge fans of, but like it works and it does make this bike faster at the flip of a switch. Uh, Sean, um, electronics, integration, uh, yeah, driving I mean, we, it. Yeah, we've got our, our TQ system. So you've got the switch, which is, offers good audible clicks kind of. Yeah, yeah, and you get your beeps. Uh, the TQ display here is, I would say more on the analog <coughs> side, just very simple with your battery bars yeah. and your, how much mileage you got. Um, and then the TQ system provides qu a quiet pedal up the hill. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, I would say, just barely louder than the Fazua. Um, yeah, and just, a, a smidge. Yeah, it's definitely one of the quietest systems out. It has a really nice instant engagement, which is uh, something that I really enjoyed. Um, it's definitely a trail rider, you know, trail bike, uh, you know, XC trail riding bike. Short travel, that, that stem and bar, I think are something that a lot of our riders didn't love. It's it's intimidating to want to change that bar stem because of the cable routing and all the stuff going on there. It's not like some of the others where you're like, oh yeah, let's just pull this off and put a new bar and stem on there, right? The, the cable routing, like there's just, it looks like you have to ride it this way. Um, and I think for some riders that, that works, but if this, you know, rise and roll and angle don't work with you, you're kind of in for a little bit of, uh, I guess an adjustment period or some labor. So um, I really like the sag indicator on the back of the frame. It's obviously mandatory because the rear shock is hidden inside the frame. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit hard to access shock adjustments yeah. from inflation to you know rebound, etc. Um, so you know the upsides of it looking sleek and stealthy, being protected from the elements, also have some downsides. Um, but you know overall the bike rides well it does a good job of regulating that 130 mil travel we rode this bike often 
outside of what I think it's intended use and application Absolutely, as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, as you'll see in the video. <laughs> yeah. Um, that said, it definitely did suffer in those scenarios. Um, I don't think the bike suffered. We suffered. Well, yeah. The, well, yes. Yeah. Uh, and our speed, right? Like it wasn't as fast when stuff started to get really steep or really hairy, uh, rocky, loose. You know, I mean the. The Pivot, for example, is 132 mil rear travel, but a 150 fork. And that bike felt a bit more stable and confidence inspiring. Um, and I think a lot of it probably had to do with like not having a dropped stem and, you know, straight bar, but. The, the wheels probably didn't help much either. Yeah. Like so stiff. Yeah. The flip side is like when it came to like drag racing or accelerating, like going fast, this bike is, like you said, a rocket ship and it really wants to go. Um, I think probably the retiring XC Lycra rider who maybe wants to get into an e-bike, you know, this would be something for them to look at. Someone who regularly rides smoother, meandering type tracks that don't have a lot of like steep pitches to them. Um, Cause the suspension works, right? I, Cause I wouldn't even say they have to be smooth trails. They can be rough, but uh, just not overly steep downhills and I think this bike would absolutely shred and be a very fast and fun bike it's just not a bike for our type of rider. I think yeah. I think this particular model so this, this is the 900 SL where I think all the other bikes below it come with a traditional right. bar and stem and traditional right wheels so like that would change everything a dramatically absolutely yeah like this is is the right the top of the line pinnacle racer model. This is the show, like, this is just a bike you stick in your like entryway and be like, look at this centerpiece. It is, and it is beautiful. So Scott definitely succeeded there. But yeah, I think probably stepping down and it would open up the capabilities to more easily modify and tune the bike for your specifications. But as it sits here, to me, this is like the XC pinner choice. Absolutely. For you personally in your riding at a 10 and then I guess hypothetically put yourself in the position of like uh, an XC rider who's not gonna be hitting jump trails and rocks and chunk. For me, it's probably a five. Okay. I just, it's, it hits a couple, ticks a couple boxes, but other than that, I, I wouldn't ride it. I would look at it. Okay. Uh, for the XC rider, um, this could be a, this could be a nine, nine plus. Okay. Like it's, it does everything good for the XC side of the house. Okay. Everything. All right. I mean, Chris Chris summed it up pretty well. I'd probably be more like around a six. Like it was a lot of fun to ride mm -hmm. on the local stuff, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's just kind of unnerving okay. a lot yeah. of the time. <clears throat> but if we were able to swap this bad boy yeah, out, yeah, yeah, okay. I'd 100% rock it in town. Okay, all right. So yeah, you'd say uh, going down a couple models and kind of customizing it to suit could it could even bump this to a seven? You think? I think so. Okay, yeah, that's fair. For me. As it sits, this model for my riding style and preference, yeah, I probably would put this at a, a six, six two five, um, just because it's not the right yeah. vehicle for me. Right? And I mean, most of our audience might not even, it might not drive for. Right, right. So I think if, uh, again, for the XC rider on the trails we described, I agree. I think this could be a nine, um, if not even a hair higher, but, uh, really nice execution for what they were aiming for. I think it's just a, I don't want to say a, a pigeonholed, but it is a very focused bike that has an application and a rider in mind, um, which is totally fine. And I think for the, that rider, this is definitely something worth considering. Um, if you want to get into some steep stuff and a little gnarlier, this you probably could tell by looking at it, probably isn't the bike for you, but nevertheless, beautiful, pushing boundaries and we're excited to see more uh, of what people are going to be doing and uh, an incredibly lightweight. So um, thank you guys very much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave any comments or questions down below. Do you think that the XC e-bike niche is going to take off or do bikes need to come with a little more travel and power since uh, we've got, you know, a battery and a drive unit to assist. So uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure you stay tuned for the grand finale and the round table where we stack this bike up against the other seven in competition. Thanks for watching.